Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Hit the button, baby. Thor News presents... All right, ladies and gentlemen. For better or for worse, I'm still freaking out. Though this is much more of a low energy, my soul is worn thin freak out. So please, bear with me if you can. Because this subject is not doomy or depressing or depressing. But it is kind of frustrating. We'll start off, we are at space weather, and at the top of the thing it says, quiet sun. Solar activity is very low, which usually means solar activity is very high, not really in sunspots and solar flares, but in giant filaments, tornadoes, gremlins, and the sun just doing a bunch of bizarre stuff. So I will have to check that out later. For now, we are talking about blue skies on Pluto and green skies on Earth. And when I saw this, I literally WTF'd. I think I even tweeted Alex Parker. Oh, WTF. <laughs> Man, like, it's like they're messing with our minds on purpose. It's like they're messing with our minds on purpose. But you knew that. Blue skies on Pluto. Hey, did you know Earth isn't the only planet with blue skies? And you know what? Yeah, I knew that. If we will watch this video taken from, like, the 1967 Mariner... When they flew over Venus, Venus has blue skies, white clouds, and looks just like Earth, right? This is, I think, in the 60s or 70s, right before right before our space agencies started to master schadenfreude. So yeah, we got blue skies on Venus. We got blue skies on Pluto. And I've just got nothing but pain and sadness in my brain, doggy paddling in the utter confusion. Earth isn't the only planet with blue skies. Pluto has them too. The first color images of Pluto's atmosphere were beamed back to Earth by NASA's New Horizons spacecraft just last week. And the sky looks a lot like home. Hey, I, I agree, man. And, you know, when they showed us the close-up pictures, it looked like a giant dust bowl, you know, of dirty ice. And now it looks like we're seeing oxygen and air, which is wonderful. So, you know, man, you know, it's NASA, you know, so it's like they give us 15 different options of the same thing. And we just have to decide. Well, I've decided there's life on Venus. Wonderful. New Horizons took the picture just after it sped by Pluto on July 14th, 2015. The spacecraft's cameras were looking back at Pluto's night side as sunlight illuminated the fringe of blue around Pluto's circumference. Who would have expected a blue sky in the Kuiper belt, says Alan Stern, principal investigator of the New Horizons mission. It's gorgeous. I would have, man. Like right now... I'm assuming all possibilities could be real. I'm assuming we could have life, oxygen, water on almost every freaking planet that we can't actually verify as non nasians You know what I'm saying? Maybe not. You know, I'm not like saying that 100%. I'm just saying at this point, I literally have no clue. And I can't verify it myself, so I just don't know. And I literally can't verify it myself, so I just don't know. Carly Howitt of the New Horizons Science Team explains the phenomenon. Thanks. We never get straight answers. Always confusing explanations. A blue sky often results from scattering of sunlight by very small particles. On Earth, those particles are nitrogen molecules. On Pluto, they appear to be soot-like particles we call tholins. They're like bromides, but way different. Heavier, I think. The term tholin was coined by Carl Sagan and Bishon Kaur to describe organic substances they obtained in Miller-Urey experiments on gas mixtures akin to the atmosphere of Saturn's moon Titan. On Pluto... Tholins form high in the atmosphere, where UV sunlight breaks down. On Pluto, tholins form high in the atmosphere, where UV sunlight breaks apart nitrogen and methane molecules. The fragments recombine to form complex macromolecules. These macromolecules continue to combine and grow until they become tholins. Well, isn't that interesting? Ironically, tholins themselves are not blue. They are merely scattered blue light. When tholins fall to the ground, they show their true colors, gray or red. At least some of Pluto's patchy red coloring is thought to result from a gentle rain of these particles from the planet's atmosphere. Green skies on Earth. Well, ain't that fancy. Yeah, even though solar activity has been low, other than the like 5,000 solar flares and coronal mass ejections we had last week, the geomagnetic storms and auroras have been incredible. How incredible? Well... Sky watchers around the Arctic Circle have experienced three straight nights of auroras that some veteran observers say is the strongest they've ever seen. That's probably a combination of the sun interacting with our planet, the geomagnetic thingamabobby, and 
are shield weakening. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a combo of the two. Mother Earth gave us a massive display of lights. This was over Harstad, Norway. Man, I want to go on a vacation with a good woman and just go hunt for auroras. I would really like to do that before I die, which is another reason I really don't want the world to end in World War Three. Okay, great. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm way off base. That makes I'm freaking out. Okay. I'm trying to keep it calm, man. I'm trying to keep it together. But, like, the energy is so strong. Okay. The lights. We're not restricted to the Arctic Circle, however. Aurora spilled into the United States as far as Virginia. Sightings were also made in the Dakotas, Maine, Michigan, Wisconsin, Wyoming, and Minnesota. Most displays of this magnitude are caused by coronal mass ejections. Billion-ton clouds of gas from the sun. This event, however, was caused by a CIR, a co-rotating interaction region. Oh, yeah, that explains it. CIRs are boundary zones between slow and fast-moving solar wind streams. Solar wind plasma piles up in these regions, producing density gradients and shock waves that do a good job of sparking auroras. A CIR hit Earth's magnetic field during the early hours of October 7th, amplifying a storm already in progress. A solar wind stream arriving in the wake of the Kerr has kept the storm going on through October 8th. It is now the 9th. More auroras are in the offing tonight, albeit not as strong. NOAA forecasters estimate a 60% chance of minor geomagnetic storms. All right, as Earth slowly exits the stream of solar wind. All right, so there you have it. Blue skies on Pluto, it's an optical illusion. Blue skies and white clouds on Venus, it's an optical illusion. And green skies on Earth. The sure sign that solar activity is totally low, bro. Anyway, I'm going to get off now before I just start talking about how much I want a good woman. You know, but that's like me talking about how much I want world peace. At this point, it's just ridiculous. Okay, I think I'll drink a lot of beer and then record some audio. That'll be fun, right? Okay, great. But it is Friday, and I'm not going to leave the house so you don't have to worry about shit and shit. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should just sleep through the weekend. Uh, I'm going to click off now. God bless everyone. We will make it through this. I'm pretty sure. All right, peace out.